And let's do our usual crossover. Now, British Prime Minister Theresa May is facing a vote of no confidence from her own party today as the fate of Brexit hangs in the balance. The vote of no confidence was triggered after 15% of her Conservative members of Parliament made the move. Well, let's get more on this development. Rupert Vidovald is a political correspondent with our partners, DW, and we're connecting with him in Berlin, in Germany. Rupert, thank you very much for your time uh, this afternoon. But uh, she had postponed the Brexit vote, taken a tour to Germany, the Netherlands, and then the EU Commission yesterday. And she was doing this in the hope that there'll be a last-minute success. First of all, which answer did she get from these countries? Well, one that wasn't satisfying, not for the British Prime Minister and quite obviously also not for the Conservative MPs uh, in the Commons. Uh, the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, wanted readjustments to the Brexit Treaty, especially to the so-called backstop agreement, a very complicated mechanism designed to prevent a hard border between the Republic of Ireland and the British part of Ireland, Northern Ireland, until there will be a trade agreement. But what she heard was a very friendly but also very clear no. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said after the meeting that there will not be any change to the agreement and EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker made it also very clear the, yesterday that he doesn't see any possibility for further negotiations. Mm. Well, that's quite unfortunate. But now Theresa May is facing a power struggle at home. And if she loses the vote of no confidence, she will be replaced by a new prime minister. How will that change things for the European Union? Well, first of all, we have to say that the Brexit agreement as it is, is still on the table. And even if the British choose a new prime minister, that doesn't mean that the Brexit agreement has to be altered. But if the Tory rebels succeed and a new prime minister comes to office, the situation will become even more difficult because, again, the EU wouldn't know what to expect from this new British prime mm. minister, from his new British uh, government. For instance, if a radical Brexiteer like Boris Johnson or Jacob Rees-Mogg would take office, a hard Brexit would become more likely. Mm. But it could also be the chance for the opposition to bring down the Conservative government and call for snap elections, which then would, of course, have the Brexit issue at the centre. So most clearly, the whole process will be delayed again, putting mm. the already reached agreement between the UK and the EU into jeopardy, which means that an already unstable situation is going to be even more unstable. And we are lacking one thing which is really needed here in Europe, and that is clarity right now. Mm. Interesting. And in the meantime, Jeremy Corbyn is already, he looks poised. He looks like uh, he's standing by. But the EU is going to hold a summit uh, uh, on Thursday in Brussels. Uh, does the, do the European uh, countries have anything to offer the British to help in this very delicate and difficult situation? Well, the president of the European Council, Donald Tusk, who had also had a meeting with Theresa May yesterday, he summed it all up, quite frankly, on his Twitter account yesterday. He posted, clear that the EU wants to help. The question is only how. And what is clear is the EU countries do not want to start negotiations over Brexit again. They don't want to open the treaty. They don't want to alter anything. And the most what the EU can do is to offer some sort of an additional declaration in which the EU promises its goodwill on the backstop issue or on some other things. But the main problem, again, is that the British government has said what it doesn't want, but it never really said what it really wants instead. So this has been one of the key problems of the Brexit negotiations in the past months, that the British position has never been clear. And so what we are lacking here, again, is clarity. clarity. And something we won't have in the next few weeks if the situation is going on as it just looks like. Well, we'll have to wait. It looks like time is what will buy that clarity. But before I let you go, Rupert, have the German people uh, reacted to this? Uh, and, and, and especially to the response that the German government gave to Theresa May. Well, one thing we want, one has to make clear is that the Germans and I think most of the European countries uh, here are this, uh, have the same position uh, as the Germans. Uh, Germany and the Germans, they never wanted Brexit. No one in Europe ha has really been keen on this, uh, on the British to leave Europe. And uh, what, what we see right now is at least a hope that perhaps at the very end of this utter mess that we are witnessing right now, um, the British perhaps come to senses and um, 
uh, try to go away from the Brexit issue, perhaps have another referendum, have a second referendum, or that there are going to be snap elections. But this all is just a hope. Mm. In the end, what the Germans and all, and all of Europe right now need is stability and clarity. Thank you very much, Rupert, uh, for that update and that analysis. Uh, Rupert Vidovert is political correspondent with our partners at DW, and as usual, we're connecting all the way from Berlin in Germany here on the Pulse. Just watching the Pulse with me, Gifty, and our peers.